Welcome back to another installment of Why the Managerial Estate Will Fail. In our last installment, we discussed surrealism and its connections to managerialism. In this installment, we shall discuss liberalism and how that fomented, or was the precursor, the forerunner, to managerialism, and how liberalism may preach democratic values, yet its true governmental structure behind the facade, behind that thin veneer, will always be an oligarchy. How they preach freedom and individuality, but that liberalism will always conjure up a hive mind structure. So to continue, incompatibility, solved by the sharp intellects of the managerialist metaphysics, with a minimal and simplified morality and hierarchical structure, Something that would permit the establishment of a controllable and maintainable autopoietic or self-regulating system. To attempt to establish this ostensible universalist and simplistic moral structure is the calling of the managerialist, though such a structure is largely unnatural to the participants of this hodgepodge agglomerate, this writhing, undead mass of multiculturalism. The universalist, yet reductively materialist moral structure, or the touted value system that the postmodern West supposedly holds to now, the nauseatingly vague and arbitrary values of inclusion and diversity, is only maintained to ensure the facade of the crumbling tower holds a little longer for the pluralistic populace to interact and trade, temporarily forgetting their chasmic differences and innumerable divisions. Like all facades, nature takes its inescapable course and breaks it down. Decay sets in and renders to dust the spectral dreams of the mad minority that finds themselves perched atop the apex of this rickety hierarchy. Thus, this moral structure further ensures that the managerialist elite never really have to address those annoyances of congenital and ethno-cultural divisions that are inherent to a multicultural demography. Divisions that will eventually lead to the factionalization of the nation or civilization. Come the perceivable and eventual collapse of the central government, and a patchwork of city-states, competing ethnic enclaves that will coalesce and form from the ruins of the once unified managerialist state and nation. War shall be the defining element, the cornerstone of the coming age. The strong shall survive, the merciless shall prosper, and man shall be rendered to his primitive pursuit of power at all costs. The culture that persisted within the managerialist state, like that of the comparative collapse of Western Rome, will linger for some time after the erratic collapses of the central governments and the unifying idea of the national interest wanes, but these will eventually become fabled times of yesteryear and will be treated as vestigial remains. All of these ultimately diametrically polarising divisions that caused so many problems in the past and still persist within an awkwardly concealed and tensely suppressed state in the present, are what the facets and branch ideologies of liberalism seek to train out of man, man's tribalism. They seek to, like the exorcists of old, drive that demon from the soul of man. This is done through out-and-out suppression, as we have made mention of, but also through providing man an alternative form of tribalism within the sport teams he vicariously finds false glory through, or by tribal loyalty to the state by ideological and identitarian proxy. However, as we see within today's world, especially within the West, though the problem of managerialism and its negative influence exists within the East too, the social engineering that has been ruthlessly and unremittingly conducted by the, by the managerialist state has produced a generation with some of the highest levels of mental unwellness that the species has ever bore witness to. Depression, 
anxiety, social maladaption, reclusive tendencies, and a habit of perpetual loneliness, the inability to connect to others, and the manifestation of state-promoted dysphoria-related genes that act as an unhealthy coping mechanism for many. These are the symptoms of the victory of managerial neoliberalism over all other competing forms of population governance, a broken generation amidst the call of twilight, the Omega Man that rests upon the bones of his ancestors, the last man that knows of the fruits of heaven now spoiled by the restlessness of decay. He is visceral with grief for the loss of that which he cannot describe, yet misses dearly, though he can do nothing but be drowned in the deep reservoir of his own phantasmal imagination, the bastion of his escape. Purloined the sun now is, fallen under the axis of the horizon it has, the abstract is far more tempting within the unreality of reality, dreams within dreams, shadows of shadows, to light the fires of the beacons on the hallowed slopes of those ancient mountains and echo forth into eternity the proclamation that there are, indeed, still faint glimmers of compassion and magnanimity within this slaughterhouse known as society, that man may still be free, his spirit may still be unchained from the fatalism of cyclicality, and that we may emancipate ourselves from the grief of the material burden, basking within the blossom of a new spring, under the tutelage of a great calling of pure potential realised through beauty, grace, and harmony. Quote, the worst form of inequality is to try to make unequal things equal. Unquote. Aristotle.